Welcome to the finals whistle, everybody, here on the Bama Standard. Yes, we are back, and we got a lot to talk about. <laughs> you know, it's I know everybody's waiting. Um, you know, we got the all-star panel here. I'm Matt Cadell, proud Bama alum, you know, Bama Sci-Fi in the building. Chris James, how you doing? Be sci-fi to the day I die. <laughs> I love to say, man. All right, Coach Smooth, the one and only content creator fan analyst, quarterback analyst, kick.com. He does it all. How you doing, brother? I'm 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 good, man. I'm ready to get it to it, man. I, I'm glad to see the fans are already ready to go. See Let's some go. very, very strong comments and perspectives <laughs> and points, man. I'm ready to get to it. You already know how we doing. We giving you a disclaimer. We are cutting raw tonight. Oh, tonight. Oh, now. Yeah. What's and up, Jim? What's up, you Jack? Had to, you don't have to pay a premium subscription for this No, either. and that's not the name of my OnlyFans, okay, guys? <laughs> <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, Final Wilson Dan, our lead recruit analyst, Mr. Final Wilson Dan, how are you doing? Only dance. I'm recovering, you? brother. <laughs> <laughs> Just like us all. And ladies and gentlemen, the Bama standard, Mr. himself. Mr. Justin Riley, the hardest working man in the business. How you doing, brother? Let me talk to you. We are the mega stars. Whose game is it? With everybody saying the final, final whistle, whistle, roll tide. Wait, I want to say this, guys, before we start the show. I want y'all to have a lot of energy and focus, you know, because this is we got South Florida. We don't need to be having low energy and lack of focus. So, so I've heard from some of the current players, just laying it out there. You know? Right. That's, yeah. that's, 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 everybody remember, this is a new generation. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get it started. We're going to let go. Mr. Chris James, a.k.a. Dan's big brother, kind of narrate this thing, kind of flow us through the, you know, the things we want to talk about tonight. Ooh, so, Chris yeah. James, the floor is yours. All right. What's, what's good, people? Um, our first topic, we're going to talk about Miro versus Reese. Who's to blame? Did Reese call plays to put Milro in position to succeed? Coach Smoot, we're going to start off with you. Then we're going to pass it over to Matt, then Justin, then Dan, and then I'll finish it up. Let's go. I have to put my coach gum in for this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's let's it's let's let's sponsor. be honest. Let's <laughs> let's be honest, honest y'all. Milro, be honest. Man, he 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 let me down tremendously, man. I mean. From early in the game, I didn't see him get comfortable ever at no point in this game. And there were opportunities. Yes, the the offensive line struggled late in the game when we were in obvious passing situations. Um, but early in that first quarter, he did not help the offensive line, nor did he help the receivers. His inability to, you know, progress through the coverage, breaking down the simple coverages that they were throwing at him. Um that it was just it was amazing to me how how nervous he seemed you know he just seemed so tunnel vision like if it wasn't there in that in that view it was like he was stuck there his eyes weren't scanning like like they were week one and it brought some concern to me early and i was saying it in, in some of the group texts and it was a few passes that he completed they weren't really you know uh confident throws uh first thing i saw was a lack of confidence in his throws man he didn't deliver the ball and so after about the third or fourth drive, I began to just look at, you know, the type of play calling. And I, I honestly believe Reese made proper adjustments to test Miro this game. He gave Miro every opportunity to show, um, you know, the, the growth that he believed we needed to have in order to make this pass offense just as equally effective as our, re our run game. Our run game was going solid in that first quarter. Um, I think... I, I don't think that we ran away from it. I think you just have to maintain some type of balance. And the two or three times where we we was trying to maintain balance and Reeves were there, Miro, there was a turnover on the first one. <laughs> I don't know why he read that strong. You know, it was the numbers weren't even there on that strong side read. I don't I don't even see how you even drop back and see that. You see one high with three match up underneath and the linebacker inside. The numbers just don't match up to go and make that first your first look. Um, so that first read it, it, it threw me off, but um, it were it, there were multiple opportunities there early where he just didn't help the offensive line out or the play calling. I mean, running backs early in game, first half, good pass pro, 
it just was set up for him to be successful and he just he just didn't step up to the plate and we're going to dive into it more but that's just my first initial take i can't blame reese i think reese did a good job trying to compensate for what milro began to you know um show that he was lacking but overall man milro has to be better he has to be more of a quarterback for us if we're going to have to use this offense and be balanced he's going to have to be more of a quarterback let's go hey real real quick i just want to thank our sponsor workspace solutions the guys that make this possible that bring you the greatest content when it comes to alabama football on youtube and across the bama verse if you are a small business or a large business it doesn't matter if you need a a digital presence or a full-fledged marketing team these are the guys to reach out to yes give yes. them a shout out hey and hit that like and subscribe button if you're here we need to know it chat i am challenging you to get rowdy tonight show up show out be crazy if you're watching the replay get in the comment section yes. all right this handed off chaos, the, justin the crimson chaos yes y'all are now the crimson <laughs> chaos, chaos. chaos. <laughs> t-shirts on the way Chaos like the Crimson Tide looked on Saturday, but neither here nor there. But <laughs> the piggyback off Coach Smoot, I got to say, like, I agree with Coach Smoot. Like, I wanted Milro to be so successful. I think we all were pulling for him. You know, the whole naysayers, you know, he came out looking so strong week one. But, you know, I, I feel like it's kind of – I think Milro has a lot to blame. A quarterback cannot turn the ball over. You know, Coach Saban is not going to play that although he was calm on the sideline on Saturday. But, um, you know, we can't turn the ball over. That was the difference in the game against a good team, against Coach Sark, Texas at that, you know. And, you know, I think Tommy Reese could have done some things better too. And I say this only comparison. Could you imagine if Lane Kiffin was the OC on Saturday night? You know Lane Kiffin would have called jet sweeps all night to get mm -hmm. the ball on the perimeter, quick screens, uh, quick passes to kind of get Milro um, warmed up, you know. But I do think, you know, I do think Reese called a good game. I think it was opportunities, as Coach Smoot's point. He made adjustments, you know. I think we could have, you know, I think he was struggling. I think we could have just ran the ball. But I think we need to have more design runs. And I say this, you look at Lamar Jackson when he won the MVP race. You know, he had Greg Roman with the Baltimore Ravens. He played to his quarterback strengths. Like, they had pistol. They ran eye formation. Like, I didn't see none of that kind of creativity, kind of get show confidence in Milro. And that's why I say I think it's, you know, some of the blame goes on Reese, but not all of it. I think Milro has to be a better quarterback. In order to be a starting quarterback in the SEC, you cannot be this green. Like, I think you have to be – like, he's not even to the point where he's able to look off – safeties and um look off the defenders and then throw it to the opposite side he's not even reading defenses like that i said jermaine burton could be the leading uh receiver in the country right now you know we had the quarterback and miro was able to you know look down the field and read defenses because burton is cooking bond is cooking who, who is called cooking. burton though come on now <laughs> uh you call burton yes cooking. coach smoke was right He's the man. Um, Malik Benson was cooking. I mean, I, Kobe Prentice was Kobe cooking. Kobe Prentice, yes. like we were hitting the home runs, but I can I feel like we could have helped Milro with short, intermediate, quick passes. Because listen, that second interception, the DB was bailing. I'm like, why are we running a 15 yard run route when he's bailing? Why would just run a now route? Just throw it to him quick and let. Jermaine Burton quick, you know, cook. Obviously, our offensive line and guys, our offensive line didn't help us. So, you mm, know, no. it, it was just a bad game all around offensively. Um, we got to do a lot better. We got a lot of changes need to be made. It starts with the mm. head man, Coach Saban. I think we've got to do things in practice to kind of get these things right where we're playing the right guys. And um, I'll say this about Miro. It looks like during the game, they didn't let him call the game. It looked like he was looking to the sideline to try to get the adjustment or the audible. Like I, I to me, I think that's that's just showing a little bit of lack of confidence in Miro. So yeah. that's my two cents. I'm gonna pass it over. Who you want me to pass it over to? The Justin, let's go, Justin, Justin Riley, everybody. Hey, hey, hey! Glad to be the next man up, right after one of the most prestigious dudes to ever do it, <laughs> and the leader. Of the OnlyFans revolution. <laughs> my favorite 11. 11 in my heart. 11 that's it. That's it. 
But first of all, guys, I want to make it abundantly clear. Did Jalen Milrow make mistakes? Yeah, he did. But for those who were pinning uh, 95 to 98 to 99 percent of the, the reason for the loss on him, he is not the sole reason. Okay, you can't pin this on one person. It, it's a lot of people's thought, uh, faults. It's a combination of so many things going wrong. And as far as Jalen Milrow and Tom Reese are, are concerned, I do have to agree on the sentiment made, calling plays to his strengths, getting him out on the perimeter, RPO, short, quick passes, something similar to what we've seen in Philly with Jalen Hurts. In the first part of the game, I feel like we were doing that, and that's when Jalen Milrow was at his most confident. He was a little little bit uh, a little cocky, but in a good way because he was playing his game. He was with he was in his element, and then all of a sudden it shifted back to uh, this put him in the pocket. This make him be drop back Peyton Manning, Bryce Young for Alabama fans. That's not his game. He's not going to be confident in that. And as soon as that happened, things began to unravel for him, and then he gets in quicksand. And I said this in a previous show. I wanted to see how Milrow was going to adapt when he hit that moment where he's in quicksand. Could he pull himself out? Could he overcome that adversity and be that guy? And unfortunately, he never really could. Yeah, he had some great throws to Jermaine Burton. Hats off to Jermaine. And yes, Smoke, you were absolutely right about Jermaine. A man who was cooking all night long. But I just don't feel like he was ever put in position – the way he should have. And in the second half, we started getting back to what his strengths were. Matt, we did get to the short intermediate routes and it worked. We moved the ball down the field. We scored. But then after that, we went back to PlayStation ball where it's all verticals all the time. I just don't feel like that we made good decisions at all. We reverted back to Bama of last year, offensively and defensively. And, the view up in the booth has kind of said it all. So I'm kind of curious now, after Milrow has gotten knocked down to the mat, how does he respond? How, how does What does he do when he gets up after he's seen the video? He's been, had an opportunity to reflect. And that more importantly, what happens again if he gets back in that quicksand? Good stuff, Justin. All right, Dan, your thoughts? Yeah. The, uh, you remember when I, I talked, I gave my prediction. I said two things were going to determine the game, and that were uh, explosive plays and turnovers. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened, guys. They made more explosive plays than us, and two turnovers cost us dearly. Now, I, as far as the blame goes, I kind of put it on both of them because as far as Miro, you know, of course the turnover, those was on him 100%. Uh, he, he wasn't seeing the field. And he wasn't patient with his progressions at all. He wasn't. We we had receivers running open. You know, I, I watched the rewatched the game several times. We had receivers running open, and he he just wasn't seeing them. Now on uh, Reese's part, you know, he he could have helped him out a little bit. He could have moved the launch point. You know, have him roll out. Do you know move the pocket a little bit? Cause the pressure he was getting was really coming up the middle. You know, so he you know. He should have had him move the pocket. And we had no design runs for him. That's what he does best. You know, a, a good office coordinator, he's going to take what a guy does best and take advantage of it. But we made no attempt to do that. And um, it, it was just very disappointing to see. But uh, I'm going to get more to that later on. Good Chris. stuff. All right, close it up. Um. It's plenty of blame to, to pass around. I'm not going to put it all on Miro. I'm not going to put it all on Reese. Um, first off, the offensive line. I, 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 I'm mm. extremely disappointed. I understand Caden Proc. That's his first big game. He's a freshman. You know mm. that happens. On Reese's part, I felt like he could have gotten Caden more help, like um, keep a tight end on his side know, but or, or get, send him back to chip, you know, because he was being beat by that speed rush. And so – Jalen Cusley had pressure on him. Um, and I also we got away from the run game when we were running the ball earlier. It felt like we were gonna get in the groove with uh McClellan and he was gonna have a big night. 
then we went away from it. Um, and as far as Miro, and then another thing with Reese, I felt like he could have called more play action passes to get Miro on the edge. Um, Reese, if, if, if he's going to go to one side of the field, at least can put him on a run and let him have one side read like flood, flood one side of the field, put him on a, on a run where he can <laughs> be looking, you know, where he can see three receivers in the area or whatnot. All right, as far as Miro. Miro, he missed some throws. That we the the most the biggest one was the wheel route to McClellan when he mm. was, he was wide open, and he just needed to put a little more air up underneath him, a little more touch, and let him run up underneath. That would have been that would have been a change of turning point in the game. It would have connected on that because he had the linebacker beat, and Reese dialed up a great call because if you see, they sent the guy in motion and br- brought him back to see if the linebacker was going to go with yep. him to let him know yep. that you were in man coverage. So once he noticed that he was in man coverage, when he came back, okay, when the ball snapped, he got him. They ran around. He got him. He's, he's beat. He has him by two steps. Just put some air underneath and let him run up, up underneath it. Oh, so man, we missed that. It was a couple of balls that were thrown in the dirt. And then on the interceptions, like, that say, he didn't see the safety at all. Like, Burton like like Burton was right there on the, in the, the corner was sitting on it. Both, prob, both of them probably could have picked it. Picked it off. Burton was never home. Home. But I would have rather seen – them roll him out on that throw with a run pass option to get him on the edge. Because if you think about it, all if he would have been on the run, the only person who would have had to make miss was that safety that was coming downhill to the, in, into the flats. He would have gave him one of those and hit his head on the goalpost. So there's plenty of blame to go around. I'm not going to blame the receivers because they play outstanding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they put and I, I want people to get that point right there, Chris. From, from, from Benson to all the receivers played well. Like – at a high level, I don't want to hear nothing else about the receivers. Yeah. Yeah. Like not not underperforming. Like they did what they had to do to win the game. Jason McClellan did too. Um, but I mean, it's plenty of blame to go around. It's just some things we got to clean up. It's it's fixable. But all I all I'm going to say is, Miro can't have that type of game again, or he won't have that job anymore. Like all he's right. on the, he's on the timer now. He's on the countdown. Yeah. Oh, that's a fact. <laughs> so, real so, quick, go ahead. Real quick, uh, one thing that I want to say that all of us keep alluding to is, you know, that play calling by Tommy Reese. I think Tommy Reese saw what everybody on, in the Alabama fan base saw. All our receivers were cooking. Yeah. You know, all Milro had to do on a lot of those plays was, you know, just give it up early. They were winning early in routes. I'm talking about Kobe Prentice and Jermaine Burton just winning early yes. in routes. I'm, I'm, you know how we talk about winning in phases as, you know, DBs and wide receivers, first phase, second phase, top phase, like, these guys were winning in first phase, man, and it was it was like okay. you you could see, you could just you could just see Tommy Reese up in their booth, like man, I got I want to I want to go and put it use his legs, but if I could just get him to have one confident throw and just trust the the what what we're calling trust the reads what he's supposed to be doing, that might break him. And I think we we stayed on that hope too long, and that's why we stayed yeah. away from the run game because receivers was winning. The offensive line was struggling Ooh. running, you know, late in the game Burton. trying to run block. Burton, the wide receivers Burton. were winning, so Burton. you just, you just, it was hard to go away from it. That's my, that's my only point, guys. It was just hard. You expect your third year program guy that's been through a couple of tests, you know, that's supposed to have this progression in the off season. You expect him to see some of those things, and it just did not click. You expected it, and I think that 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 McClellan pass that if he would have connected on that, that's a different feel. It's for the game. We know we know how quarterbacks get after plays like that. Yeah. Good stuff, man. All right. All right. All right. Next topic, we're going to talk about the penalties. Oh man, we, we reverted back to those to those penalties of last year, miscues. And then um Amari Not Black's Instagram mm. after the after the game. It was it was disheartening to see, you know, what we saw. But I let um we start off with Dan and we're gonna pass it over to Justin. To come back down to Matt, then Smook and I close it out. Man, I I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> as far as that goes, man, that I was disgusted. You know, I'm just I'm gonna leave that at that. I was just disgusted. I, I don't even want to discuss that. <laughs> mm. I'ma be I'm I'ma say. I'm coming from Coach Shula days. <laughs> we used to, <laughs> the Dave <listen>. Raider days. <laughs> oh, we would catch L's and be and, and be out kicking it partying. So I get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Matt was um, at the CC, folks. Yeah, 
the Hollywood. The Club Hollywood. <laughs> uh, the 750, shouts out to T-Town. We were kicking it, but yeah, I, I don't think I would have put it on social media. You know, I, if anything, you know, I, I mean, I get it. You know, he had a great game. You know, it's just this generation. You know what I'm saying? I just think um, when you come to Alabama, you are – building your resume for the, your future. Like, is is you got to start thinking in a mature concept beyond, you know, football, NIL right now. Like, you got to start thinking about, okay, yeah. what do I do after football? You know, how is this going to look when I'm trying to, you know, get a job or, you know, network with all these big-time companies? You know, you don't want to turn off because Alabama has a lot of big wigs that, you know, you already played a great game. They're like, oh, man. But, you know, I just think that wasn't a good look. But, you know, the kid has his right to do whatever. But, I mean, it's just for me playing that big game and losing, I don't know how happy I would have been to be like, you know, kicking it or whatnot. If anything, he was going to go on social media, he should have been in the dark room just talking about how pissed he was right. <laughs> losing the game. But, you know, I just think from a fan's perspective, that's not what Bama fans want to see. Like, Bama fans, one thing about Bama fans, we bleed so much crimson that the fans should not be caring, it, caring way more than the players. You know, I just think, uh, shouts out to DJ Sticker Bush. You know? Vick, that's Vick, man. That's my cousin, Vick, yeah. man. <laughs> but uh, I just don't think, it, I don't think it was a good look. Justin, your thoughts? Man, first, let's, let's talk about the penalties. The penalties – are the Achilles heel of Alabama. They have been the past four seasons. We have ranked at or near the bottom of, in the country in terms of penalties. I believe the average was, what, eight to ten penalties per game this past year, 80-plus uh, yards a game. And you think with the new coaching staff, the new regime who have that dog mentality, that that's going to be easily corrected. Well, apparently it still lingers. We had a relapse. And I get it, maybe old habits die hard, but these were penalties that took two scores off. Yes, Milrow did throw two interceptions, and, and yes, you cannot turn the ball over. You've got to protect the football. But on the flip side, when you have two touchdowns taken off the board, that's the difference in the game too, guys. We have to be disciplined. We can't beat ourselves. In a lot of ways, Alabama beat themselves Saturday. It's one thing when you get beat straight straight up. Somebody dominates you. you. At the end of the game, you lose. It sucks. You hate it. But you can say, you know what? They were just that much better. And Texas is good. I give them props. I give Sark props, the best offensive mind in the country. But there are so many self-inflicted wounds that took us out of that game. And that's inexcusable. There, there, there is nothing that can excuse it. As far as the social media, guys, get off social media. Please. There, there, there is no excuse. And the, the guy didn't even what get off the field for five minutes. His tape was still on his ankle, his uh, his wrists. And he's sitting there dancing and having a good time. Hey, we just took that L, but man, look at these views. Are you effing kidding me, man? You know, it just kind of shows you the mindset. They're not engaged and I, i've said this before and Corey miller said it as well a lot of these younger guys aren't necessarily committed to winning they're more committed to the the money side of it the uh the business side of it and getting that nil and ultimately getting to the league so winning is not that important to him to them and if you don't have that mindset, we don't need you. Four or five what, star, whatever your classification is, I'd rather have a zero star from, from the sticks, getting them out of the mud, who actually has a reason for being out there instead of these people right here. And the fact that it did not bother us in the least amount when Texas was celebrating on our script A in the middle of the field, partying, taking pictures, and having a good time, that bothers me, guys. Our guys just walk right on by, going straight to the locker room. Back in the day, if that happens, win or loss, they're getting mad. They're throwing hands. Somebody gets suspended next week. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, but you know what? That, that gets in the way of them getting to their Instagram lives. Oh, 
And you know who else is looking at? I said future employers, companies, NFL front offices are looking at all this stuff. So you don't want to mess up your draft stock. You know, mess, you know, you don't want look what happened to Antonio Brown. You know, he went viral in the locker room. Nobody wants that type of attention. Toxic. Toxic attention in their locker room. So, you know, I would, you know, kind of be, use a little bit more judgment and a little bit more maturity and think of what's going to happen on down the line. That's all I got to say. Smoke on you, baby. Uh, tell me, let's talk about the penalties. And miscues first and then my, then not Black's um, Instagram. Um, Simple about the penalties and miscues, man. I, I can call out the main ones. You had two interceptions that turned into 10 points. All right. That's, that's, that's the difference. That's, um, that's the first difference. Uh, second, like Justin pointed out, um, shout out to David Agri for the 999 super chat. They don't care about winning because some of them probably make more than coaches. It's just like the NFL. They don't care about winning or losing because they get paid a lot. I'm gonna get right to that. I, and you're you're going right into my point um about knee black. Um, not necessarily knee black, but uh, but you had 12 points called back off of two penalties on our offense. Um, you know, one of them was barely a a, a touchdown. Jermaine Burton made a great um, you know. Paying attention to the play, he made a, a great play on the ball. But um, even in that play, man, it was just awareness by the quarterback that put put the guys in bad positions when opportunities was there for him to be a court, you know, be who he is, an athlete. So those, those penalties kind of they kind of balance each other out. But then the one possession where uh, we had Texas third and four, and we get the uh, the stop behind the line, but it was like a face mask or something on um, Justin Boyd, I want to say. Early in that in that drive where we flipped the field after we had to you know go seven and out or how many plays, um that one was a big one. So those penalties are, are what killing us. Good penalties though. I like Terry and Arnold's two uh uh PI. pass interference. I I love those. You had late call coming in on on one of the plays. A late pat the late call for the defensive call coming in. Um so he 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 got beat early looking at the sideline. Um, made a smart play, and that 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 didn't turn into a points. Now the second one, you know, um, they called on him, or he, they had three called on him. This one of them, he would tripped up or whatever. I don't like those. You know, guys playing the ball, the ref got to be able yeah. to have a better it's judgment not, on that, yeah. especially in big games like that. But um, that's how I feel about the penalties. They were just penalties. I didn't see the same type of penalties from last season. I like miscues were were bad and key points, but. I will say since last year, I seen a little bit better focus. I saw more panic in this team about trying to, you know, make up gain ground that they was losing momentum wise. You seen panic in those moments. Mm -hmm. And that's not what I want to see because that's what causes the penalties. It wasn't penalties from being tired or just getting whooped. It was like panic. We got to do better. Um, what about um, down course or downfield? Now that was, that was, to me, that was ticky tack. I think that was borderline because <laughs> he was literally locked in with, with a man downfield, wasn't he? Wasn't he locked in with somebody? Oh, downfield? he had like, a jaw off. No, he, he was downfield. Oh, they yeah, said, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the, now that, that, back. That, hurt. that that's just lazy. That's just lazy, though, because he's not looking around for the ball to see where the play is or nothing. He just <laughs> – he ain't touching nobody now. He's like – We know what, he ain't touching nobody. Uh, David Davis Lewis Love, what happened to Ja'Cory Brooks? We need to let the D-line rush the QB. Crushing the pocket won't work. When you rush the same way every play, thank you for the five dollar super Thanks, chat. Davis. Thanks, Can I get off of my? I don't. I only want to comment on the knee black situation because my my thing with that is, and, and just to everybody's cleared up, he wasn't at the locker room, which I had to go and double check. He wasn't at the locker room. I went and confirmed that. Is hence why his girlfriend he bay come look. I got all these lights, but I didn't like the fact that it was a it was a thing of people trying to judge his character. Kids these days don't they don't they don't have you know closets and stuff to go to and sit back and put their headphones on and listen to music you know what i'm saying they they are already out in front of everybody anyway so um the way he did it i would have rather him like matt say if you're gonna be on social media let's talk about man coach pissed me off because i should have been in on this you know what i'm saying if you're gonna be making noise do it like that show your passion for you being mad about losing you get what i'm saying like like if, if you're gonna be on there after a loss a big game loss where y'all talked it up just speak on it from a, a perspective of showing passion don't be on there celebrating people following you already man you got 40 some thousand followers on on instagram and twitter like it, it's nothing you you play for alabama you got players that don't won't ever see the field got more followers than us and we put our energy into being in front of people so it's like you know 
show some type of pride at the end of the day. I, I understand give them their freedom, give them their outlets, but show some type of pride, man. We got a lot to correct, and it's all gonna start with the mentality of a lot of these kids that's gonna be thrown in the key spots, and it's gonna be small things like that that gonna catch us in the long run. Right. And Spook, I have to agree with you in regards to Terry on Arnold. I, I don't really get mad at his penalties, to be honest with you. I like his aggression. Me too. And, smart. If, and if you're going to get penalized for being aggressive, I'd rather you get penalized for that going oh, yeah. all out. And he it's not like he was just being whipped and getting penalties because of that. It, he was in phase. He was fighting every yeah, right. down. I can't fault him for that. Smart plays. That's, and that's the thing. He was confident in making those plays. Um, the only one I I, I kind of regret that he that he got was that uh, the one where he was holding on to guy's shoulder pad the yeah, whole like yeah. 15 yards. He, didn't have to do he that. was in, he was in good position, and I was always taught when I first played corner, if you riding a guy, let the ref see let the ref see five, show him five. If you are gonna have your hand on the show him five, that means you could put your hands on him, don't grab him, but just kind of find the ball, keep your space, but show him five. If you showing him five, most refs not gonna call it. And that's, that's one thing I learned right. earlier as a D-back. Just don't grab on nothing. If you're showing five, jamming and everything, you showing five, they usually not going to call it. All right. All right, I'm going to make this quick. Um, the penalty miscues, it, it kind of reminded me of, of, of last year, just like touchdowns being called back. Um, the penalties, I mean, like the other penalties, the aggression penalties, I don't have a problem with, like what we said. Um, and as far as not blacks, Instagram, it's, it's like it's just the timing of it all. You know what I'm saying? Like wrath of the game, like I I'm pissed. Like I'm 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 heated, man. I don't want to talk to nobody for a minute. But man, you know, you gotta it's like it, it was just <laughs> to too store. soon. It, it was, it, it be was too soon now. It was too soon. soon. I'm trying you know to pick me up a little, a little something. Yeah, something. but I'll be like I, I've been in Matt room afterwards or something with Matt and LeBron. <laughs> I go over there, man. We talk about the game. You know, we have our moment. Rather than we, like, we, kick it, we kick it, we kick it. We, but it's between we, us. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. Saying? yeah. We have right a lot of the game libations and have and, and bending and letting it out right then. Let it out. <laughs> yeah, you know, it is. But yeah, let, let's see it on that. But we got some more to go, y'all. Okay, what went wrong and what went right? We'll go ahead, and start mm. off with you, uh, Smoot, and then we go to Matt, to Justin, then Dan. Uh, what went wrong? What went right? Let Let's talk about wrong. Of course, just Milrose and not inability to you know read when the option opportunities was there. Offensive line inconsistency. Defensive line inability to get any type of pressure during the game. Um, in the past pro, and that was all by player design. We know Steve Sar- Sarkeesian set that up. He called a great game to keep our D line ineffective. Um, linebackers, they played great. Defensive backs played solid. You know, minus the two big plays that true freshman made true freshman mistake you know made a good read to to jump the route that he did or sit um you know but the thing was they just they just designed it so perfectly man my eyes got lost you know when that that deep cross that deep shimmy uh post came skinny post came across his face like my eyes were lost in that place so i was trying to figure out wait where he come from so and, and they climbed him he climbed him he climbed the ladder so fast you know going up the middle of that field um so what went right though i did like the way our receivers played, man. I saw a lot of guys reading coverage and making the right reads. Um, even the Jermaine Burton lucky catch, that was the right read. Um, the the uh, the wrong read came from Knee Black bringing his guy over. It was man, I mean, uh, zone coverage. Um, Knee Black should have sat on his side of the mesh. You know, they had the mesh concept. What did go right? I saw a lot more plays designed to go across the middle to force Miro to read the middle. But he just never went to it, you know. He 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 get he left a lot of those middle middle of the field reads open, um, and like I said, even with the linebackers, man, the linebackers played solid. Inside linebackers played great. Lawson, um, mm-hmm. uh, Marshall played solid, uh, and and Marshall I got nicked up early in the game. I seen him playing through some injuries. So overall, you know, that's my assessment on what went wrong, went right. I I, I really want to see that offensive line. Do a lot better, man. I, I promise you, if we could stir up two or three spots at offensive line, we can be a lot better at that quarterback position. Ooh, David. Ooh, we bought some heat. I don't. I don't think he wants him to fail. It's. It's more so. I just think that he probably wants his he, system. He, his guy that knows his system. It, it may be easy because what I've been hearing. I don't, I'm not sure how true it is, but I've been hearing that he's been getting some first team reps. Buckner. Buckner. Yeah. This week in practice, so he should. I, I, I'm not mad at that because you know you would want to bring in a guy that you're familiar with. So I'm, I'm not mad at Reese. I don't think he wants him to fail, 
I just I think you know you can get yeah. frustrated a little bit, but if, if you got a guy that that knows your system and does what you want to do, of course you're gonna kind of be a little more favorite towards him because he knows what you want. All right, Matt. This is a great oh, point. AJ McCarron, he said. We were in the national championship. Yes. Yeah, beat Notre 30. Dame by like thirty points, <laughs> and we still he was still chewing out Barry Johnson, All American. So Barry Jones, Barry Jones, Barry yeah, Jones. I, my bad. I said Barry Johnson, but yeah, he was. That's the type of mentality we need to have. Barry Johnson, <laughs> Barry Johnson. You think Barry Johnson, Mike Johnson? You think about Barry Mike Johnson? Barry Johnson. Barry Johnson was his cousin that played double A ball, but in double the A. Way, my Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Matt. What was right? What was wrong? <laughs> <laughs> but he, what went, what he went played wrong? semi-pro ball for uh, the Birmingham Blaze. Yeah, <laughs> the Barracudas. The Bar- yeah. <laughs> Barracudas. But yeah, to me, I I gotta start up front, man. Like this team talked about so much. This is what went wrong. They talked about, man, we're gonna be physical. We're gonna bring back bully ball, joyless we murder got bigger. ball. Bigger. We got 340 across the bar. Well, we look slow. We look like we couldn't block nothing. We have – look, guys, I'm watching the game. We have such bad technique. Like, I'm not understanding our poor technique on both sides of the ball. We look high. Whenever we come up, I'm like, that's why we're getting blocked back because we have no leverage. Low man wins. You know what I'm saying? So, the, to me, the offensive line, the defensive line, the defensive line, oh, my gosh. Like, I literally watch Dallas Turner get double teamed. I watch, I think, Braswell get der- double teamed. And I saw Jaheim Otis on a one-on-one, and yours is right there, and he goes to get blocked. Guys, we got to have better technique from our defensive front. And it shows. You look at Texas. Who does Texas have? They got Bo Davis, arguably probably the best defensive mm-hmm. line coach in the game. Obviously, and it shows his technique, you know, his practice drills, what he does, you know, how he how guys use leverage. They're reading the play. They're shooting the gaps. Our guys rush to get blocked. Like, it's like, and if they are blocked, if they get close to the quarterback, all thing they can do is raise their hand, like, Give me a swim move. Give me a rip move. Guys, I saw Miles Garrett Sunday try to do a crossover on a center, and it actually worked. Like, we work on your footwork. Like, we got to do something in the lab the way we can get pressure with four down linemen, three down linemen. That way we can really free up and get this defense uh, creative. So, to me, offensive line, defensive line, they got to get better. What went right? Receivers, I got to shout out the wideouts. They did their thing. Even the tight ends, I felt like the tight ends did their thing. Knee Black had a big play. Um, special teams, Will Riker, James Burnham. They, you know, they did amazing job. You know, I, you know, I didn't even know they could. <laughs> we, I'm not used to seeing our punter out there, but <laughs> I mean, it is <laughs> what it is. But um, he had a big one though. He yeah, had a, yeah, a big did. kick that, yeah, that got know. us out to the three. Yeah, it got us down to the three. So. Our special teams did right, pretty good. The punters, the specialists. Um, what went? Another thing that went wrong. I just think we needed more design runs for the quarterback plays. We could have used quick passes on the edges. You look how Sark at the beginning of the game. What did the first thing he do to get Ewers kind of comfortable? He threw like a quick screen out there, first play to the quarter to the receiver to kind of get him going. Then he comes back with a jet sweep. Working the perimeter, you know, all that stuff sets up. So I think like we could do those things to kind of help our quarterbacks. But other than that, um, those are my white and right and wrong. Sorry. You good? Good stuff, man. That's great stuff. Oh, um, Mr. Five Twelve, Bama's O line is that? Is that? I think he meant to say, isn't that bad? Old D line has been winning almost every scrimmage leading up to the season. Man, let me tell you something. Shout out to Texas, man. Like, like people don't realize, like maybe Texas is that good. Like, I was looking at their stats at the end of the game. Eight of their 12 top tacklers were all seniors. And then 10 of their 12 were juniors or seniors. They had one freshman and one sophomore. They are a very veteran, experienced team that I think that they, that they only have two games to circle on their schedule. The Red River rivalry against Oklahoma and that game against Kansas State. When we yeah. Have them at home. If they win those two, I see Texas probably being the number one seed going into the playoffs. If they can handle those two games and go on the feet and run the table. 
So, because I don't see other – Texas Tech is, a, is is pretty tough this year, but they are up and down. But if Texas can do that, because they had the pedigree, they had the pedigree to uh, what it takes. So, you know, I'm not going to dog them because, I mean, they keep not tell. So, hey, can uh, I say this? Can I say this before we get – well, let's get to the comments. Put all three stars in this weekend. I agree. I agree with that. I'm all for it. We need to – we need, these guys need to get hungry, you know. Thanks, baby. Um, but I can say this about Texas: they aren't world beaters. I will say this: Bama played about as bad as a game as they could play with turnovers, interceptions, penalties, all inexperienced quarterback, whatever you name it. And we still had opportunity to win the game. Like it uh, until we got under the five minute mark, I was like, "Dang, we have no chance yeah. to win this game." Yeah, yeah. But, other than that, we still had opportunity to win this game. Well, so. hell, Matt, they had the ball the last seven minutes. <laughs> I hate the rule, man. We couldn't get stopped. We couldn't get off the field. We couldn't get off the field, and then we jumped off sides, and I was like, ah. And, but y'all gotta yeah. understand, man. Look how many times the defense was put in that position, man. We gave Milro and that offense four extra possessions between the second and the third quarter, mm -hmm. uh, before that uh, half of the third quarter was gone. He had two extra possessions where. We missed three opportunities on those two possessions. I yeah. mean, one was on the second down, one was on a big third down, and then the the last interception in that before that fourth quarter, like he got, I believe, like we keep alluding to this play calling, we got forced into that passing because the you just couldn't see you you wasn't going to stretch the field and open it up as you need like you needed to you unless you hit those reads, you know. You and then the deep and and it 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 was it got bad, but. Guys, we this is week two. You know, this if this is if this is going to be our worst game, I'm glad it's against Texas, a highly touted Texas team that has the talent. This ain't a lucky game. We didn't we didn't lose by luck. We really got beat by a team that actually has the players that can they really do. really can compete. We really compete. Talking about head to head across the board, yes. and we competed. We competed with a young team. We competed, Justin. Right yeah, on. so first of all, Texas, got to give a shout-out to them. Uh, they deserve that. They came prepared. And I knew against Rice that wasn't a good indicator of how good this team was going to play. They looked ahead. And it was kind of like back in uh, 2009 when uh, Auburn jumped out 21 to nothing on the road because we were so focused uh, like on Florida. But we ended up finding a way to win. For – for Texas, this was that monkey off their back moment because they've been told for so long they couldn't win that big game. They couldn't finish a game. And, yeah, we hung in there. But the fact that they came away from with the victory, it says a lot about their character. They won that huge game on the road and can per perceivably allow them to take that next step to being back. As far as what went wrong, and I'll keep it very quick because a lot of us, this has already been said. I said this in my segment earlier. Jalen – uh, Milrose inability to escape quicksand. That was a that was a killer for us offensively. The offensive line just an utter train wreck right now. I I don't understand it. I don't understand why Darian Dalcourt is still being allowed to start. I don't know if he has something on Miss Miss Terry or or Saban or, or what the actual reason is. But he he's a cancer and it's causing this disruption along the offensive line. It's time for Ferguson to come in there. Put and, Ferguson in. If he if he struggles, let him struggle. That's one of the best teaching tools. Defensive line, the biggest stat of the night, zero sacks. What, two pressures? Kayla, uh, Quinn Ewers, his jersey was wider after the game than when it came in. Also, too, lack of adjustments, guys. We reverted back to Pete Golding Ball. We did not make any kind of adjustments. Jatavian Sanders, how often was he left unguarded at several points on the field. Didn't make any kind of adjustments for that. As far as what went right, like you said, Matt, you just kind of took my momentum. Will Riker, the best kicker in the nation. James Burnett was putting the hell out of that ball, and field position means, means a whole lot in that game. The wide receivers played their asses off. They were cooking, and had the ball gotten to them, they could have really done some – Major damage. Got to give a shout out to Malachi Moore. Oh, that, he was the only dog Saturday. He was an absolute dog. There was no negative that I could have placed on him the entire night. He's the only player I give an A plus. 
I agree. And quick, like David uh, Agri, James Smith and the freshman need to get in. Dude was angry and talking to himself on the field during Middle Tennessee State. These upperclassmen need to be challenged. I completely agree. We all do. They 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 need to be challenged. Thank you for that, Dan. What up, Coach Saban? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, as far as what went went right, I'm gonna discuss something that hadn't been discussed. I think our defensive line played fairly well against the run. You know, you're allowed 2.8 yards per carry. You know, you should have a good chance of winning the game. You know what I'm saying? But uh, we got to get some pass, interior pass rushes on the field. We got to figure out a way to get that. You know, we got to find us interior pass rushes. Uh, but uh, guys, you know, I'm looking at it like this. You know, we, we're going into week three. And we're still looking for our offensive identity. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's kind of scary. You know, we, we we don't know if we have our quarterback. You know, that, that worries me. You know, so we we, we got to figure out some things real fast before we get into, uh, you know, our SEC play. But, you know, we, we got to make a choice. We're going to go with Jalen, go with Jalen. Let's, let's design more plays for him. If not, let's get somebody else in there, man. But we 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 – if we're going to save this season, man, we got to make some tough decisions real quick. I agree. Honestly, feed the backs. Feed yeah. them. Don't go Where away from them. Hey, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You know, we we got to get in the pistol formation. You know, let's take advantage of our big line. We got a big line. Let's, you know, let's, let's get in the pistol. Let's get these running backs going downhill. Uh, J- Jace was averaging oh, what? Get on the J- Jace was yeah. averaging what five or six yards a carry, six point two first- yards per carry in the first quarter. Right, yeah, and then average. all of a sudden it goes back to Bill O'Brien ball. Let's just stop doing that. We don't need that anymore. And hey, then, you know what, Justin? I, 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 I'm gonna have to disagree with that, man. I ain't gonna say because we we didn't go away from the run game. I think we started rotating backs too early. Yeah. That's what happened. the 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 amount of rush attempts we had in the first half. Compared to the amount of drop back passes Jalen Miro was putting in, outweighed and he had four drop back passes. I mean, no play action where he just caught the snap and in the first half, the rest of his drop backs, the the thirteen pass plays that we had, the rest of them were play action. They kept the run game implemented. The look, the run game look, the the rotation of backs. We got to get back to riding the hot hand. We said it. Uh, I talked about it on another show. The guys, running backs at Alabama, they come to run the ball. You know, that's why Alabama backs come. They come. So when they get high, if they get an early start, that's what they made do. Derrick Henry and, and and Mark Ingram and Trent Richardson, those guys that, that gain momentum throughout the games, they really were hot in the third quarter. And they, it's because they had early starts where they were just getting those opportunities, 10 or 12 carries down. before the first half. It's, it's perfect to keep a guy going in the second half when you need to lean on the run to open up the pass game. I'm, I'm and had they done for, that in the fourth quarter, they would have been run. They would would have been worn down. They went back to it too late, and by the time they gave the ball to Jace, they were stacking the box, stacking them. Yep. And <laughs> it's like, all right, Jace, uh, come do your thing again. Best of luck. And he gets buried. I'm I'm yeah. just upset that that that, uh, that um Justice Haynes didn't didn't get any touches. Like yeah, I would I love to have seen him at least three, at you least three or four. Not but even – he don't need, like, seven or eight. Give him three or four key second downs where we – ahead of the sticks. You know, they're not expecting to the run. They're looking for pass, you know. And they tackle well. When, like, the play jam trying to break to the outside and safety came downhill, like, they – they it's a different look from the scout team to all we can practice to, to game time. It's going to be a different look. It's – um, but, like, you guys pretty much what went right, what went wrong, you guys pretty much said it. Um, I mean – uh. It, it is what it is. Uh, we got to finish up with grades and predictions for the Bama versus South Florida game. I started off um, the secondary. If we wouldn't have given up those big plays, they probably would have gotten a B, a B from me or even an A minus. But we gave up 385 yards. I think it was 385, 382, something like that, passing. And it, it, and Quinn, he was did what he wanted to do. He was over sixty percent completion rate. Man, we getting an F. I'm, I'm grading hard this semester. I'm grading hard. Like I, I just, 
it was unacceptable, man. Like bust. We looked like last year against Tennessee. We really did. Mm-hmm. And um, and it looked like that same two looked like the two from last year. That's all I'm gonna say. But the difference is the kid has time to grow up and learn from that. It, I want to slowly put it on him. I'll put it more so on Sark's play calling ability. And my prediction versus South Florida, I think we're going to have an angry Bama team coming in. And I'm going to go 52. I think we're going to hang up 50 this week. I think it's going to be a pissed off Bama team. Who's the quarterback? 52 to Jalen. I think that I think that we're going to have three quarterbacks that's going to play this game. The same thing yep. they played the first game. I think all three of them going to play. But I just think that they're going to put your buck in the starts. He he's riding. He, hey, that may be it. But if if Miro starts, I I expect to see Butner early. I think Butner will come in early. Yeah, I think he'll get, I think Miro will get at least if he starts first, the first two three series. He's gonna get the first two. Yeah, because <laughs> everybody every Bama fan gonna be mad. But my grades, I, offensive line, defensive line. I'm sorry, like th- those grades are not high in my book. Um. The run, the running game. I think we could have, we could have done better. Um, I just think we had too many penalties, too many lack of efforts. I'm gonna say a D. I'm not gonna give them. <coughs> um, receivers A, running backs. I felt like Jace would um, did a really good job. You know, Rodell he did okay. Jam did okay. He did pretty good. Um, he did okay. I feel like that one play he, he got caught trying to bounce it outside. Just mm-hmm. stick your nose down and bury your chest in that man's uh, chest play, and then you get like four yards. But um, yeah, I want to see Justice Haynes, so I still give the running backs outside of Jace about a C. Tight ends did really well. Secondary, I think the secondary did actually did better than what they, you know, than the grade that Chris gave them. The only reason I say that what that helps the grades. What helps the great secondary is a good pass is rush. having a good pass rush. If you absolutely have no pass rush, so for them to hold their own to what they were doing, I think they actually did a pretty decent job. And to go against all these, you know, worthy AD Mitchell, um, the tight end, Anders. Um, hey, Whittington, what, 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 all, all the, I thought they did a decent job. It's just that we have nobody to affect the quarterback. It makes that job that much more yeah. difficult. Hey so, man, worthy, worthy, and 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 AD Mitchell just won too many, too many um, one on ones. They, they, stacked, they, they had our DB stack too too many times. Yeah, they did. You know what I'm saying? They were always in. We were out of phase. But just know. imagine we had a, a a pass rush to get to you or way he can I throw a, a crazy throw. I feel like <laughs> that saved us. In early two, in 2011 through 14, <laughs> yeah. it's only so much you can do as a, a DB going against these, you know, fighter jets each play. So, um, you know, my prediction, I do think we do see Buckner um, Saturday. I don't know if he's going to start. It's going to be a mystery. I think we'll find out by practice on, you know, Sunday. I mean, Saturday, Friday or whatnot. Um, but I do think, I do, Chris, I do think, like Chris said, we do pray play well pray we have a final quarterback we do play three quarterbacks and i'm interested to see what ty simpson is gonna do because i still think ty simpson is probably our better one of our probably our best quarterback i think he's just a gamer if you throw him in the fire he's gonna make plays so i i still i know everybody's talking about buckner i still think simpson might be that guy for real for real so i'm interested to see how it's gonna play on saturday but i do think Bama's gonna get a win and um, we're going to get back healthy and get ready for um, Lane Train coming in the mm. Give me a score, man. Give me a score. I'll say 52-10. Uh, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know anything about South Florida, so, I, you know, I might give them 14 points maybe They're at home in Tampa. They're going to be ready to play. So i say 48-14. Dan? As far as grades, I'm gonna just grade the whole team. I'm a, I'm gonna I'm give us a C plus. But let me the thing about that C plus is not gonna beat the Texas of the world. Nope. <laughs> you no, know, that that that's the thing about it. We didn't play that poorly. It's just that we know we could have played a whole lot better. You know, I'm I'm gonna quit harping the time to move on. We got South Florida. 
Uh, the only way I see Miro staying in the game, he got to come out on fire. He got to set the world on fire the first two drives to where he's so hot you can't take him out. Other than that, we, I expect to see Buckner. But uh, as far as the score goes, I'm looking at, I guess, 45 to 7, Bama. It better be. Mm. <laughs> I want to address this real quick from Robbie Dillard. Nobody going to mention Ooh. the play of our center. Hey, we were hoping Listen. that nobody mentioned that. That's like the elephant in the room. Yeah. Well, well that, to me, that that's going to be that's the biggest mystery out of all this. You know, this for me this season is that Seth McLaughlin was one of the best players on the offensive line the past three years. Most consistent guy, toughest guy, and now it's like he forgot how to football. And yep. it's concerning to me. I don't know what has caused this. I don't know if it's because of uh, the, the problems with Dalcourt, just the causing a negative vibe across the board. There's just something that needs to be dealt with and unpacked. I, I want to see him get back to being that guy who blocked Jordan Davis like it was no problem a few years ago. Uh, as far as grades, uh, I'm going to go with Dan. And as far as the, the whole team, I say a C minus. In terms of South Florida, I think that Jalen Milrow is going to be the guy. I don't think Saban just throws a player away immediately. I think he's going to give him an opportunity to bounce back from adversity to see how he responds. But I think we will see multiple quarterbacks in this game. I feel like Alabama is going to win 34-10. to And can I say this? If he's going to rotate the quarterbacks, shoot, we need to rotate the left guard. We need to rotate center. We need to rotate – a lot of positions. This needs to be a game almost like a spring game where we need to play a lot of guys and we need to figure out who we going to play um, moving forward. Because if not, if we continue to play the same guys, do the same thing, guys, we're going to lose probably two or three games um, going and, through the season. So. And, Matt, to your point, this is a opportunity for Caden Proctor to start to mature. I've given him a pass because he's young. But listen, he doesn't need to be put on his ass anymore. He needs to start getting whipped. This is where the the growth needs to start happening. Yeah, let me let me ask y'all something right quick. Do you think that what if we move Booker over and create a strong side with Latham? That's or what. Just, that's just what. Do it. Flip Latham the left tackle and let Proctor start on the right side and let Booker and Latham man the left side. The blind I side mean, for quarterback. I still think you need to put Pritchard. I still think you need to rotate Pritchard and Ferguson, regardless. Like, let Proctor get two series. If he ain't cutting, put Pritchard in. Like, it's not gonna hurt you. Like, put Ferguson in for down court. Play eight guys. Play yeah, eight play guys. Eight guys. Play eight or ten guys. I think the same goes for the D line. Jay Roberts. Yeah. Yeah, Miles McVeigh, Olayas. Yeah, yeah, as I say, yeah, uh, Alanine or or McVeigh. Why not? Yeah, so those guys. Give us, we push. need to rotate guys. We need to find out who's the big best core. And I think what better way than South Florida? Like we need to be playing as many guys as possible. It's a non-conference game. We're on the road. We're coming off of a loss. We need to find out our identity, and we need to find the group of guys that we're gonna roll with. Moving forward, you know, like I feel like this is your your time to show it. Put up or shut up. If you don't do it versus South Florida, listen, you're gonna get left behind because this SEC play, we ain't got time to, you know, trying to figure it out like we did versus Texas. And and Lane Kippen is not gonna have mercy on us. Or Pete Golden. <laughs> <laughs> All I gotta do is run the wheel route. That's it. All game. So, hey, get this super chat real quick. We got David Kendall, five dollars. Go back and count one, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. See how fast Texas was getting right. behind the line of scrimmage, less not than true. two seconds about every snap. Yep. Right. Not not true. It 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 was it was like maybe four or five snaps in the second half where the defensive line was just just blew our uh offensive line up. But early in the game, like I said, Ooh, it, it, yeah. y'all gotta look at y'all gotta look That's at the build up to how that that defensive line built that confidence to just handle guys. Tommy Reese made the adjustments early. Jalen Miro got to see those early reads. That's how you get a defensive line standing up instead of being able to worry about being able. Like I, we said this before the game, in order for the offensive line to grow, the, the quarterback has to make the plays when the plays are there. When they create opportunities, he has to take advantage. You build momentum off of those plays. Guys start to get a feel of what type of pressure, how much energy they need to exert 
early in downs because their guys being consistent on what he's seeing on the field. He yep. didn't help. He didn't help the O line. The O line didn't help him. The second half, when we got pushed into obvious passing situations and plays were there where he had pressure in his face, it, it happens. It happens when you're going against highly talented defensive players like Texas is going to have. You have to be able to hang in the pocket and take a few of those hits because now you, when you do that, you make the safety that's walking down and playing close, you're making them back off. The linebackers that's being the extra number five and number six that's, that's being sick, they have to sit back and play in coverage now because now you're showing that you're going to stand in the pocket and take those, make those plays. So it's a balance that has to be created early on. Um, the legend. Sherman Williams. The Sherman, Sherman Williams. Williams. What? The Sherman, 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 Sherman. Sherman. Sherman, 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 for this this past Texas game, I give the offensive line and defensive line they get C minuses for me. They started. I, I think the offensive line started strong. Defensive line, they just never got a good hold. They did good in the run game. Linebackers, they uh, <laughs> yeah, facts. Tony Brown, we do need that thug. Oh, back. he would have cussed everybody out. <laughs> yeah, we need that thug. Yeah, uh, but how the team would transfer out. <laughs> linebackers, I give my linebackers a, a B plus. Um, they play solid. Uh, I only give them a B plus because our outside linebackers were ineffective this game. Um, so as a whole, inside linebackers they made up a lot for what the outside linebackers didn't didn't do. Kendrick Blackshire needs more snaps. Let's let's talk about that too next next week if we don't see it this week. Um, secondary, I give them a, a B minus. I think they played like like to the point. It's hard to be cover guys for five seconds, guys. Chris, you know that. Matt, you know, anytime you have more than three seconds to cook on a wide receiver on a DB, you you got a b- good chance of winning. So, for what they had to work with, B minus for the DBs. Uh, offensively, the O line D plus, D plus, uh, and that's because I I love my Crimson Tide, and I think those guys can figure it out. I really do. Quarterback plays C minus. Jalen Miro showed great composure, but he got to be a quarterback at some point and that means completing those 19 to 21 passes a game um running backs b minus and wide receivers i give my wide receivers an a wide receivers and tight ends i'm gonna include them together i give them an a man those guys it was so many reads they they just got overlooked so many times man it was bad and to see their composure to keep fighting and competing running their routes that's the difference i've seen in mentality in this wide receiver group guys were running routes they were run blocking blocking on the edge they were being physical. So I get them a hey, prediction for this week. Alabama better. I don't even care to give a score. I just need Alabama to get a shutout and, and our offense. If Jalen Monroe doesn't come out and have uh consecutive scoring drives, if he doesn't score on every drive, and I mean touchdowns, he has to score every drive. I see I see Ty Buckner getting in after three or four drives already. So you gotta come out and take run away with it. <laughs> or or Ty Buckner gets the gets He's going to get it early now if you struggle against Ole Miss. I don't think this game is the game we see the switch. If if mm-hmm. Milro comes out and struggles against Ole Miss in that league play, early, I'm talking about first quarter, we go three drives, get three drives, and we come out with zero points again or three points, Milro getting pulled. Yeah. That's the difference. It's not about how many points. It's about how what you do with these possessions. We gave Milro four extra possessions in the first half. I'm hey. giving the whole team a C minus. Shout out to David Kendall for the $2 uh, super chat. Giving the whole team a C minus. I agree with that. I agree with that. Hey, hundred percent. In the chats, drop your grades for the team. We want to see what you guys think of the uh, of the team grades in in the chat. Give give me your grades. Hey, Chad, if y'all can guess what I'm sipping on, got something for you. <laughs> Still reserve. <laughs> what is it, Dave? <laughs> what the. <laughs> <laughs> Checking out, got the <laughs> James Daniel Dan the man. Your only fans got leaked. <laughs> got to stop it, Dan the man. Ah, <laughs> uh, snap, Dan! I told you, boy, you better get you an Apple MacBook, man. <laughs> them Windows, uh, them ain't good. Good to buy. 
Y'all keeping me somewhat sane, talking about Alabama football, talking about Alabama football. I've been laid up, recovering from surgery all summer. Roll tight. Hey, Sherman. Much love, man. We pray you get everything together, man. Everything comes good with you. We appreciate the support, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate everybody for pulling up tonight, honestly. I, I, we you, love Sherman. Yes, yeah, you, you already Sherman, know, man. man. You're, you're a legend, man. We all love you, man. Yes, sir. Sherman, you, Sherman, Sherman, you got to stop trying to find them holes, still. <laughs> 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 oh, they grading the coaches too. They they giving the coaches even nobody's safe. That nobody's safe. Nobody's nobody oh, safe. Yeah, Man. Justin, it's on you, baby. My boy said mad dog. Heck nah. <laughs> well, we've actually reached the closing part of our show. Actually, this is like the most fun part for the chat, right? Because we get to unveil our only fans. <laughs> So we're going to start with Dan, the man, and then go to Chris, then Coach Smook. Tell everybody where they can find you on social media, how they can get involved with what you got going. And, folks, if you have not yet subscribed to what they got going on, shame on you. But now is the time to start anew. That's right. You know, you can catch me right here every week, the final whistle, every Tuesday night, 9 o'clock, y'all, uh, Eastern time. Uh, you can catch me on X. Formerly known as Twitter, at Final Whistle Dan. My only fans this week is I'm gonna dedicate this to the running backs. Can't find the hole. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, all right, guys, you can find me on uh, Facebook at uh, Chris K James Senior on X. Formerly known as Twitter at Coach Chris James on Instagram at CKJ Senior 32. And for this week, my OnlyFans dedicated to the D line, more penetration. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Smooth, I know you got one for. <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't. Uh, y'all, um, we ain't giving to it, man. We know you. Tonight, um, y'all, I just appreciate everybody for showing up for real, man. This is a different week for me. I got some some things in the work with my content. So if you all really want to see what's going on, just check me out on each platform at Coach Moot. Um, I'm trying to clean up my, my image, y'all. So I ain't going to be revealing my OnlyFans every week. You know what I'm saying? Like, people going to have to start paying for this, don't you? know what I'm saying? People going to really have to start paying for this. I ain't going to keep got we on this as you mother paying for You know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> um, but yeah, if y'all want to find your boy Coach Smook, man, just Coach Smook on everything, man. And um, I will. This is my last week doing this promo for y'all. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling y'all, y'all better come through and y'all better pay up. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can That's find me. my OnlyFans. <laughs> y'all can find my OnlyFans. <laughs> I'm dedicating this one to the wide receivers. Open 24. <laughs> <laughs> Get that man's face off of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love talk, man. <laughs> oh, I told y'all. <laughs> sorry. sorry. Hey, close. Sorry. Sorry. Hey, sorry. Report. I got the bag. Hold on. Hold on. Where my? Sorry. I, I got a million dollars right here. Report. That's hilarious. I told y'all. Man, that's sorry, we got a million dollars. This is the million dollars we sending to you, Sark. We sending it to you right now. Come on back. Please, Sark. Please, Coke. It's a, it's a real million dollar bill. This is probably the only one you're going to ever get in your life. They write the checks. We got the cash money. We got the bag, Sark. Where did you get that dollar from, from the table from the Moon Winks? Man, I had this dollar. My granddaddy gave me this dollar in 2007, dog. This is the only piece of money my granddaddy ever gave me. I done kept this dollar since I was. Bro, for real, man. Right before he died. I, I done kept oh, this dollar since that. Matt yep. must be shooting his only fan. <laughs> yeah, Matt said he had to hop off. He had to hop off real quick, man. You know those Oh, yeah. Guys. You know, he got his premiere tonight. Y'all catch Matt on. um. In the, I, no, I ain't gonna do that. I'm gonna let him do it next week. 50 shades of Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, as far as the content we got going on here, keep on be, showing up every week. We appreciate you guys. Y'all are the best fans in the world. If you want to follow us on social media, it's quite simple at the Bama Standard on pretty much everything on TikTok. A little different at the underscore Bama Standard. We are blowing up. Stay tuned for what we got coming next. And Hey, we might even show up this weekend for a post game if you're lucky. But anyway, we greatly appreciate everybody. Thank y'all, chat, for doing your thing. Thank you guys on the panel. Get ready for next week. We coming. Roll tide, everybody. Roll tide, everybody. Roll. Oh. We.
Bye.